Okay, so these were the two slides that were homework. Which group would you expect to share the most characteristics with A. placophora? So remember that the more closely related two groups are, the more shared derived characteristics we're going to expect to see. So first we've got to find A. placophora. There they are, spicule, covered, worm-like. Who the heck knows what that is? Some marine biologist, not me. They're probably some really weird looking thing that lives in the ocean. Okay, well, the group that would share the most characteristics is the one that's got the most recent common ancestor. And if we follow this line back, the first time it has a junction is there. So the most closely related group to it is polyplacophora. Placophora. Okay, so that's its most closely related group. Now, which group has had the most time go by since having a common ancestor with clams and mussels? So again, we're first going to locate clams and mussels, and they're up here, bivalves. Um, and we're going to trace back the lines to see who's got the most recent common ancestor. Well, scallops are actually in the same group, so they, they have a very recent common ancestor. They're actually in the same um, they're in a bivalvia. Let's look at squids and octopus. So here are our clams and mussels. Here are our squids and octopus. So let's trace this back to there. So there's their most recent common ancestor. And let's do, now I screwed this up. Chitons and polyplacophores, well, chitons are a polyplacophore, so that's really one thing. And I don't know if anybody else caught that. Duh. Come on, Moser, proofread your stuff. But anyway, <laughs> um, if we trace a line from these guys back to the last junction with polyplacophores, it's way back there. So these are the ones that have had the longest time since they had a common ancestor. Now. One misconception that I saw on a couple of these, um, I had a few people who said, well, you know, well, I guess that was on the next question, but, you know, who are, who are thinking that every branch between two things, every branch point is a common ancestor. It's not. The common ancestor is going to be a single point that is common to the line of both of those groups. This one is a little bit harder because you're asked to you asked a question about a, a claim that's being made and asked to tell us if the cladogram supports it. So clams are more closely related to snails than to tusk shells. So where are clams? Well, there are clams, once again, and there are snails. So if we look for their common ancestor, it's there. Now, if we look for a common ancestor with tusk shells, where are tusk shells? Scaphopoda. That's the last place that Scaphopoda and bivalvia had a common ancestor. Is the statement supported? No. Absolutely not. They've got the same, they, they all three groups are equally related. All three of them have had an equal time since a common ancestor. Um, this was where I saw the misconception. I had a few people who said, you know, well, tusk shells and clams have more common ancestors, and like they highlighted all those dots. That's not the way it works. Um, the only common ancestor is the point where their two lines split off. So all three groups are equally related. Same time since a common ancestor. Questions on that one? Okay.